Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Do not go to hell. You've heard the expression, go to hell. It is not even appropriate to say it, but the truth is, do not go to hell. Let us talk about it. Hell represents total, eternal, and conscious separation from God. It is a place of torment. It is a place of eternal suffering. There is no definite location of hell. Some people believe it's far below the surface of the earth. Others believe it is in outer space. Am I being funny when I say that hell is downwards? Most Christian theologians agree that the Bible does not provide us with a geographical or cosmological location of hell. But what is important is that you listen to the title of our talk today. Do not go to hell. As was said before, hell is a place of torment. It is a place of severe agony. And in hell, the rich man lift his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Luke 16 verses 23 and 24. Let me just say, hell is not fictional, it is not mythical, it is not a figment of human imagination. Hell is a place where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Mark 9 and verse 48. Hell is real and hell has a purpose. Who will be in hell? You need to know that Satan was not always Satan. He was originally one of the of the highest orders of angels in heaven. But he wanted to be like God, and he led a rebellion in heaven, and God threw him and all the angels who sided with him, and they will never go back to heaven. So what happened? In the middle of a lesson that Jesus was teaching about the time when the sheep and the goats will be separated, Jesus said something profound. He said that sometime in the future, God will bring us to one place and there he will separate the sheep from the goats with the goats being on the left. Then he will also say to those on the left, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25 and verse 41. You see, my friend, hell was not prepared for humans, but Satan has caused humans to sin. And so the Bible teaches that Jesus came to the world to save people from their sins so that we would not have to go to hell. But the harsh reality is that folks who reject Jesus will be condemned to hell. John 3 and verse 18. It is stated very clearly who will be sent to hell. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Psalm 9 and verse 17. You might argue that you do not fit into any of those categories. Well, I have to be the one to say what the Bible says. I believe that there are going to be a bunch of people who did not plan to go to hell. Seriously, they are some folks who simply kept on putting off the decision to accept Jesus as their Savior. Some people plan to wait until they've had a good life of pleasure and when they're old and near to dying, they will give their hearts to the Lord. The truth is that no man knows the day when they will die and the young die and the old die. I heard recently of an 18-year-old teen who died of heart-related diseases. 18 years old. Or what about kids who are victims of war and die from grenades and other deadly weapons? The reality is that if you don't get saved while you are here on earth, there is zero chance to get saved after you die. Let me say that another way. The only time you can get saved and be guaranteed to escape going to hell is when you are confronted with that decision and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved Romans 10 verses 9 and 10. Don't put it off, my friend. The next minute is not guaranteed and tomorrow. Hmm. So what will happen if you die before making that most important decision? For it is appointed unto man once to die, and after death, 
the judgment. Hebrews 9 and verse 27. Let me explain. If you die before giving your life to Jesus, then your name will not be recorded in heaven. Fast forward to the day of judgment, which comes after you've died. I must admit that this passage that I'm about to recite is very hard for me to recite because it is so final. Bear with me while I share it with you. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them, and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and dead, death and hell delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20 verses 11 to 15. That last line, my friend, is so hard to fathom. Today, I'm talking to you because I simply don't want you to go to hell. Let me say it clearly. Do not go to hell. I'm serious. I am very serious. I want you to go to heaven. I want to see you in heaven. You do not deserve to end up in hell, but that's where you will spend eternity if you stubbornly choose not to accept Jesus into your life. And so today I'm pleading with you, please do not ignore what I am saying. I am begging you out of love, make today the day that you give your life to Jesus and cancel the ticket that you have to heaven, to hell. Your name will be written in the book of life, my friend, and you will go to heaven when you die. Will you? Let us pray. Dear God, I am a sinner and I don't want to find myself in hell after I die. Please, Lord, come into my life today and change me and make me a child of God. Please write my name in your book of life and lead me on the road that goes to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. My closing thought, be wise and do not go to hell.